All right, so we have a new thing to talk about, and it is sex-linked traits. So far, all the traits that we have been talking about in humans have been on chromosomes 1 through 22, which we call the autosomes and which are the same in men and women. But in addition to that, there are a pair of chromosomes, you can think of it as the 23rd pair, which are called the sex chromosomes, and they are the ones that are different between males and females. Males have an X and a Y, and females have two X's. And so looking at those chromosomes, you can tell what sex a person's going to be. And there are some traits in addition to the sex-related ones that are on those chromosomes. And one example of that is hemophilia. The X chromosome carries some instructions about how to build clotting factors in the blood, and if those are built incorrectly, hemophilia occurs. It's a condition where the blood does not clot properly. You cut yourself and it just doesn't stop. So, let's look at how this works. All the rules that we have for Punnett squares are still going to work, it's just there's some new notation involving how we deal with traits that are attached to the sex chromosome. So. There's several alleles that you can have in the sex chromosomes, and here's a list. You can have an X chromosome with the normal clotting trait on it, and that gets the symbol XH. This is an X chromosome and the normal version of the gene that could code for hemophilia. Then there's the defective version, which is X little h, Hemophilia. And the third sex chromosome that you could get is a Y chromosome. This one doesn't have the hemophilia gene on it. It has nothing to say about it, and so there's no such thing as a big H or a little h version of this. Only these two chromosomes have opinions about clotting factors, and the Y has nothing to say. And in general, you can expect nothing that is essential to life is going to be on the Y chromosome. And a good thing, too, because women do not have this at all. There better not be anything in the Y chromosome that you need to live, because 50% of humans do not have this. So all the essential information to build a human body is in the chromosomes 1 through 22, what we call the autosomes, or on the X chromosome. The only information you're going to find on the Y chromosome should relate to building male-specific body parts. And it has to be stuff that a woman can do without because they're not going to have this chromosome. So, the phenotypes you can get from this, or, I'm, yeah, phenotypes, let's go through all the combinations here. You could have a person who is X big H, X big H, or x big h, x little h, or x little h, x little h, and the other two combinations are x big h, y, and x little h, y. Now what are these? First of all, this is a female because there are two x chromosomes, and she has the normal clotting factor trait on both her chromosomes, so definitely no hemophilia here. This is a female again, and she is heterozygous, but happily the normal trait is dominant here, so she also will have normal clotting, but we call her a carrier for the hemophilia trait. She may pass it on to her kids. And this is a female who unluckily got two copies of the hemophilia gene, sorry, allele, and will actually exhibit the trait of hemophilia. This is a disease that's better known for affecting males, but it can affect a female if she gets this. Over here, XY means we have a male and he has normal clotting, and this would be a male who has hemophilia. So that's how the alleles and phenotypes break down. Let's tuck that away a little bit, and let's see what we have for our example. We are crossing a female who does not have hemophilia. If all they said was that, we would say, okay, female, XX, 
and does not have hemophilia would mean big H and we would not know what to put in this space. She could be a carrier or she could be big H, big H and be completely fine. They bail us out though and they say she is a carrier, therefore that. Crossed with a male who is normal, okay, here's a male, XY, and he is normal, so big H. There's no such thing as a male carrier for this trait because males only have one X chromosome. Either it will be normal and they're fine, or they'll have the hemophilia allele and they will show it. But there's no second, there's no way that a recessive X chromosome can hide in a male because it's the only X he has, he's guaranteed to express it. So, if we cross these two, a Punnett square occurs. Here's mom, X big H, X little H. Dad is X big H, Y. And so we get X big H, X big H. Here we get X big H, Y. X big H, X little h, and X little h, Y. Okay, so what are these? X, X, it's a girl, and she is normal. She has two copies of, norm of the normal clotting allele, so good health here. X, Y means this is a male, and he has the normal clotting allele, so normal male. X big H, X little h, this is a girl because it's two X's and she is heterozygous like her mom. So normal clotting, but she is a carrier like her mother was and she may pass this on again. And XY means this is a male and his only copy of the X chromosome has the hemophilia traits, so this is a son with hemophilia. You can think of it as these traits affect males more because women have two chances to get a good copy of the X of the hemophilia allele and they or to get the normal allele that is and they only need one in order to be free of the condition males only have one X chromosome so it's easier for them they don't have a backup in case this is the hemophilia trait it will be expressed if they get it so in this case we have two daughters who don't have hemophilia and two sons, one of whom does. In other words, one out of four kids will have it and that happens to be a boy. There are a lot of traits that we say are independent of sex that happen equally often to sons and daughters. This is not one of those. This is a trait that is much more likely to happen to a son.